Hello there guys, it's Captain Invisible here and welcome to something very, very special for you today. Um, now, most of you have probably seen that I've been playing a lot of uh, hot seat campaigns. Um, you know, just getting a feel for them. Uh, I've currently got a Britannia one going um, and I'm also in an Iberian campaign as well. Um, which are both doing really, really well actually. Um, they're both really... Uh, kicking off uh, quite well um, and the group I am with the um, youtubers hot seat group um, has got enough members where it has decided to do a grand campaign hot seat yes a, a full grand campaign with all is it all 13 factions Hang on, we're going to go into it anyway, but um, I just wanted to um, to announce that, and uh, we're just going to take a look at the factions. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, sorry, there's 17. I don't know why I said 13, but I did, I did think there were 17 factions. Um, so yeah, they've got together 17 other YouTubers. Um, that are able to play in the Grand Campaign hot seat and we now have a full list of players um, who are going to take to the take to the Grand Campaign and uh, fight it out in all bloody gory fashion um, that the medieval times were uh, famous for um, so uh, what I want to do is just go do a quick overview of the faction I will be taking to battle uh, a bit of an overview um, and um, then we will jump straight into turn one because uh, hopefully uh, I should have the file um, across from the other players so we shall um, so I'll just show you the overview so the faction I chose was Sicily yes I decided to pick Sicily um, I've not really done a campaign on Sicily before, uh, so it was quite interesting in that regard. Um, their position is also extremely fun. Um, they're sort of on the middle of, the, they're sort of in the middle of the map, I mean exactly in the middle of the map, um, with, um, with southern Italy and uh, the island of Sicily um, as their territory. Um, and as you can see, they're, um, they're sort of out well, when I say they're in the middle of the map, they're kind of out of the way, but in the middle of the map. So they're kind of off, off in the, off in this uh, middle bottom uh, side, um, quite close to the moors, which is um, is obviously going to be a, a potential, um, either a potential threat or a potential ally uh, in the early stages. Um, we also have the Byzantines over here as well, which um, again, you know, could be a threat or um, a potential trading partner. Um, and then we've got uh, Milan and Venice uh, in the north. Um, again, no one can really trust uh, Italian states, but we'll see what we can uh, manage with them. Uh, and then a couple of um, Holy Roman Empire settlements uh, leading into Central Europe. Um, so yeah, Sicily in itself is in quite a decent position. Um, in terms of units, um, they feel the strong Italian militia um, that the Italian states are famous for. Uh, so we're going to have quite strong armies early on and uh, we'll look to utilise that um, as quickly as possible. Uh, it says they lack good late period cav uh, cavalry. I would, I would probably think that actually Sicily's main weakness is its economy. Um, because it is an island nation, it doesn't benefit too much from roads, and as a result, you're going to rely on trade, and if you allow that trade to subside, you're going to die quickly. So, um, yeah, trade is going to be quite important to Sicily, and... Um, that's going to be the main weakness of playing as Sicily. Uh, other than that, um, I mean, their infantry is not too bad. They get the sort of bro dismounted broken lances, um, dismounted men at arms, uh, and the Norman knights you can get 
quite early on, which is quite nice. Um, they don't have anything special that really stands out. You know, England has long bows. Um, France has some pretty strong cavalry later on. Um, you know, even Venice and Milan get gunpowder uh, later on, and the uh, Venetian heavy infantry. Um, but Sicily, even though it's an Italian faction, it doesn't really get anything too overpowered to try and stop these these nations. So it's kind of lacking in that regard. Um, the history is quite interesting. Um, I won't I won't go into it uh, too much, but I shall. Uh, what I'll do is I'll read the first section. I think uh, this first section is the um, is sort of the synopsis and um, I'll read the first bit and I'll read the last bit because I think they're the they're the bits that are not bound by history. Um, you know, th this middle bit is the historical reference. Uh, you can read it if you want. I won't skip over it, um, but I'll just read this first bit. So. Although Sicily's proximity to Rome has given the island a rich history, it now, it now stands as a true fledgling among the European powers. Six years before the Normans successfully conquered England, their first true island invasion was launched against the Saracens occupying Sicily. With more than a little encouragement from the... Oh, there was a little more encouragement from the papacy. So um, the Pope basically um, had the Normans uh, capture Sicily and um, from the Saracens and it became uh, known as the, uh, the Norman Kingdom of Sicily. Uh, so I'll let you read through this. If, if you want to pause it, go ahead. I'll just uh, scan over it very quickly. And it just goes up over basically how the um, Pope uh, nudged the Normans into uh, taking Sicily, and then uh, and then was a bit too displeased by their uh, by their ways, and decided to um, to excommunicate them, which was a bit sad. <laughs> Hopefully, that won't happen to us. Um, so this last bit is. Um, it would seem that the Normans will once again have to take to the waters to expand their latest kingdom. Uh, close to home, other islands like Sardinia and Corsica make tempting targets for invasion. However, the Sicilians will need to look over the horizon to have a hope of long-term survival. Uh, to the east, the Byzantine Empire is fractured and relatively vulnerable and there's ample opportunity to take advantage of the chaos on the Iberian Peninsula to the west. So as I said earlier, um, we'll basically be, be expanding either east or west, and this will determine where we end up. Um, if we go east, we're going to end up uh, here with the Byzantines and the Turks, uh, maybe Hungarian and Polish incursions down, down south as well, and it'll put us probably at odds with uh, Venice uh, for territory. Whereas if we go this way, we'll be um, fighting off the Moors and then we'll get into this whole Iberian brawl which seems to develop every single time you play it as either Portugal or Spain. <laughs> there's, always, there's always one of them that just wants all of Iberia for themselves. Um, so yeah, it becomes a real hassle. Um, trying to involve yourself in Iberia, um, but yeah, we'll look into either of those. Um, I've forgotten what these. Um, I've forgotten what these settings are for the campaign, whether it's a long one or not. Um, but the rules are the standard ones on the um, the YouTubers hot seat group. Uh, I shall link them into this the the, the description, uh, so people can have a look over them, um, and. The um, what else was there? There was something else I was going to mention. Oh, uh, battles. Um, battles. In previous hot seats, I've done one where the battles are auto resolved, and the Iberian one I'm currently in is one where uh, you can play the battles if you want to, or you can auto resolve them. In this campaign, you are you are forced to play your battles. You have to play 
every battle that you fight. Uh, no auto resolving um, and any battle you cannot play within the time frame you will be forced to leave until the following turn. Uh, so that will really put pressure on these massive armies to try and fight the battles that they know they can do quickly and it'll leave um, it'll mean that you can't attack everywhere at once simply because uh, auto resolve won't be applicable. So with that in mind we'll uh, leave that there and we shall jump uh, straight in to the uh, campaign turn number one. So it's a grand campaign uh, turn one as Sicily. Um, as I say I've not played a lot of Sicily um, I did have a bit of a practice with them earlier um, and I know that their economy is rubbish so it's one thing I need to um, to look at. Uh, first of all I need a password and I thought the perfect perfect one for this one. Uh, it's completely different to my uh, my usual password so uh, well, that is still a fairly long one that looks incorrect. Let's have a look. Oh, yeah, I thought they weren't. This is a problem with having such a long password. It, um, it often comes out incorrectly. Oh, yeah, that should be right. Excellent. So, yeah, that was um, my extreme long password that I will probably forget, <laughs> no doubt. Um, I'll have to write it down somewhere. Uh, although the only place I would remember, yeah, remember it would be if I wrote it down on my face. It, even though I wouldn't be able to see my face without looking into a mirror. Um, which I wouldn't want to do, God knows. <laughs> so, we got a message from Milan straight off the bat. Um... I don't understand Italian, so I'm not going to try to pronounce, <laughs> pronounce that. Uh, oh, buongiorno, that's it. I see. <laughs> As I say, I have already practiced with this turn, and the first time I got this message, I was like, what the hell is Bob on about? <laughs> buongiorno. Um, we wish the might, the might kingdom of Sicily uh, well, and will adhere to our uh, discussions. Uh, I sent a diplomat on the morrow and should reach you in a couple of turns. Already sent the dip diplomat to Venice. Regards, Kit, uh, Duke of Milan. So basically, me and Milan have been in um, discussions. Um, what I said earlier about trade being uh, my most important uh, income. Uh, well, Milan have a lot of trade. Um, as you can see, they've got all these resources here. Uh, they'll have roads that lead into Europe and into the trade in Europe, so having trade with Milan will be extremely important uh, for this campaign. Um, so just a quick overview. Um, we have we have quite a sizable fleet. We've got uh, three ships here and three ships here. Um, so we've got uh, a fleet on both coasts. Um, and we also have quite a large, well, quite a large army for the for the start of a campaign, um, with a general here, um, General Alberto. So we've got Alberto with his, um, not with his mercenaries, with his uh, force. Uh, two of these are Italian Spain militia, a Muslim archer, and a mounted sergeant. Then we've got uh, this gentleman, um, Prince Simon who's younger than uh, Alberto, um, and he's got a garrison here, uh, inside uh, Paler Palermo, Palermo, I just want to say Palomino, and it's, it's a colour, it's a colour of a horse that I, um, I, I used to look after, and, um, and I'm sure someone mentioned it came from southern, southern Italy, which is why I want to say Palomino, <laughs> but, Pal 
Palermo. That's gonna really confuse the hell out of me. <laughs> uh, and then we've got an army in here uh, under the guidance of King Roger. King Roger Roger with his uh, quite sizable force. Um, so he's going to be uh, looking for uh, looking for some interesting uh, opportunities to get his blade wet. Um, and then we've got an assassin, no, not an assassin, a spy here. Um, quite a weak spy actually. Uh, might need some uh, upgrading. Your Majesty. Then we've got Princess Matilda who will be a uh, Acting as our diplomat, because I don't think we've got a diplomat anywhere. No, so she's going to have to act as our diplomat uh, for the time being. And then we've got Mr. Nicolo Am Am Amasizi or something similar along those lines. Uh, not Italian. <laughs> um, and he's our uh, bishop, our cardinal. Um, and then as our other fleets just over here. Um, but yeah, financially wise, as I said, we're not doing too well. No, we're already 387 in in the deficit, and we are um, we're not even you know, we've not even started yet. We're not even done anything yet, so that's gonna go a lot lower. Um, yeah, we're gonna suffer from that uh, as soon as we start building. Um, so the obvious thing we need to do is uh, to sort of assault some places. We need to go just go out and take some lands. Um, and with me being so close to Moorish lands, uh, I feel that at least taking Tunis uh, over here somewhere would be the first uh, point of call. Your will. So uh, Mr. Alberto is going to jump ship. And he's going to head off yes. to yes, Tunis. Yes? Yes, and unfortunately, this he cannot assault this turn, so yes. he's just going to stand there uh, right yes. outside Tunis and just look pretty. <laughs> so <laughs> that's going to happen. <laughs> and over here, we're going to get uh, Prince Simon to pick up a mercenary spearman. He's going to take the rest of the force. We'll send the mercenary spearman back into Palmino. And then we're going to use this ship. Maybe this one would be better. In any case, we're going to send a fleet over here towards... Uh, I think it's there, actually. Um towards this uh, this place here. Um, so it's gonna do that. Um, and um, considering that Tunis is a wooden castle, it's gonna have some quite formidable defenses along with these desert archers. So I need the army over in, uh, in um, Tunis to have a meat shield. And then I also need a garrison unit for uh, Palmino, because um, the mercenary spearmen are going to go with the um, peasants over to uh, to supplement this army. Your orders? And we could do that as well. Combining the fleets. Just combine the fleets so that it doesn't get snagged on its way towards uh, uh, whatever this place is. I keep forgetting what that place is called. Um, it's not a very memorable one. Um, the um, cardinal can head off down here. Uh, I think was this seventy-five percent Catholic. That's not good. Um, so he's just going to chill here for now. Um, but he'll need to make his way to Tunis actually, because Tunis is um, is I think zero percent Catholic. It's yeah, it's it's not Catholic at all. It's heretic and pagan and Islam and <laughs> it's anything but Catholic which is not good yes. and we're gonna send our um, princess to have talks with the uh, papal states um, we want to uh, 
I don't know what we want to do with the papal states. Um, I'm not sure what we're allowed to do in the rules. Um, I'll have to look back on them. I keep forgetting how much uh, we're allowed to influence the Pope. Um, and it's usually uh, not, not allowed at all. Um, so we'll just get a few... We need diplomat and a spy here. Probably get the diplomat and a mercenary spear uh, and a spear militia actually first. Orders. Um, and then we're going yes. to set up Splitting our forces. a watchtower on this coast. Yes. And as you can tower. see, there's um, Durez Durizo here that we're going to um, go and capture uh, next turn, hopefully. Yes. And we've already got our um, ships here, so we, it'll just be a short crossing and a uh, and a quick assault against uh, against them. A spy will join the main army, uh, so we can have eyes in a uh, in Greece. Um, and then we need to start building. Um, as I say, being an island nation, roads are pretty useless. Um, the main thing I will need is going to be land clearance. Um, the, it's the only income other than parts that will be of any use uh, in this uh, this naval empire I seem to be building. Um, Naples, uh, probably port first. Um, I always it's an it's always a toss up between a port and a. Um, and a land clearance in Naples first, um, but I think the port will get us more trade income from Venice. Um, although I'm not going to reach Venice very quickly. In fact, let's do land clearance first. Um, the reason being that we're not going to get trade rights with Venice or Milan uh, for at least a couple of turns, and by that point, we should have land clearance and should be building the port. So um, that's my logic anyway. I'm not. <laughs> I don't pretend to be the best uh, hot seat campaign player. Um, ooh, are these uh, resources that it looks like it looks like silk maybe. Yeah. Ooh, there's amber there though. Amber could be quite useful. I'll get you a merchant next turn, um, and we'll send a merchant down to collect some amber. In fact, we could, uh... Yeah, no, we won't do it this turn, we'll do it uh, next turn. We'll send a ship up, pick up the merchant, come down here and see if we can, uh, utilise some of these resources, um, especially that amber. And there's also this one here I want to start, uh, exploiting. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much all I wanted to do this turn in terms of building and recruiting and things. Um, as you can see, our uh, finances are going to drop tremendously. Um, my only uh, solace is in that I will... In fact, I'm not going to get Tunis next turn, am I? No. Um... Oh well, we'll just <laughs> we'll just deal with it. <laughs> it's mainly construction anyway. It's the construction and recruitment that's uh, affecting us. Um, as soon as we've done all that recruiting, we'll only have to worry about the um, the wages, and um, that will only be a minor deficit then. Um, providing we don't exhaust all of our funds uh, next turn, uh, we'll still have a bit left to. Um, so that when our finances finally balance out, we'll be in, um, we should be making profits. Um, it all, as I say, all relies on getting trade with Milan and Venice, and uh, I'd say taking these few settlements and uh, just having a nice trade uh, trade circle over here. Um, so I wanted to send some diplomatic messages um, to Milan. And I'll just turn, sorry, it's really dark in, <laughs> really dark in here at the moment, so I'll just turn the lamp on and uh, get back to Milan's message. Uh, we thank you for your...
Oops. Back there. Fortunately. Okay. Have a skilled your dignitary. Dig dignitary. Dig no. Tory. Dignitary. 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 Diplomat. <laughs> oh, spelling's terrible. <laughs> I hate it. Uh, Seal diplomat to me. Not diplomat. of the recruiting said agent and he will be on his way north within the next season. May your trade prosper. Surely, King of Sicily, which also reminds me, um, send to rename ourselves as all great nations do, Kingdom of Sicily, at least until I think of something better to call ourselves. <laughs> Venice, um, hail to you, noblemen of Venice. We are in front routine. Send to you for terms of trade and alliance. You'll be fair to you. Up and prosperous. I wonder if I can fix it. Let's just uh, almost, almost. To so know how much uh, Nays Bears hates his uh, <laughs> hates his letters being uh, out of sorts. So let's do this. There we are. No, that's not right. Damn. Might just be this one that's not going to play ball. Yeah. Try this. Like, doesn't like that. Hmm. 
Oops. Oh god. Well, if Nisbez watches this, I tried fixing the letter and it failed, so <laughs> it's your it's your problem, <laughs> not mine. Um so kind of prosperous, uh yours. Sincerely. King of Sicily. Yeah, he likes his best he likes his uh that is all nice and pretty, but I can't stand all the fiddling about. <laughs> it drives me insane. Okay, um... Ooh, the Byzantines. Let's do the Byzantines. Hail... Emperor of... The... Byzantine... Empire. Understand that you are world leaders in trade and in commerce and Can fix this one. <laughs> Such dread. Defensive lines of your parts, as it is the main source. For us, and this offer there. There we are. So that's the Byzantines, and then the last one I needed to send. Well, everyone's changing changing the names. <laughs> is the Holy Roman Empire. Hail, noble emperor. This is a Sending a diplomat no, to initiate diplomatic relations. and future attacks with your mighty people yours sincerely 
king of Sicily. There we are. So that's all the ones I want to do this early in the game. Because um, it is basically turn one. Um, I just want to establish a couple of trade routes, as I say. Um, the Byzantines are quite a strong one to, uh, to have early on. Uh, they have quite a few nice cities uh, down here. Constantinople. Um, and obviously, if if we had a um, a trade uh, deal, uh, I might as well send some ships down just to help defend defend it. I might send them down here where Venice Venice has a, a city here, I think, or a town here. So I could act as a a defense of this this entire section, um, sort of blocking all this, um, and uh, obviously defending his uh, his parts down here and over here. Um, as well as defending Venice, uh, Venice's parts uh, as well, um, and this fleet can do that by itself, um, no problem. You know, I don't, I don't need a massive fleet uh, just to ward off the Turks from any uh, assaults. Um, and then, yeah, trade with uh, Milan, uh, that can go ahead and you know, sort of come down here. Trade with Venice, and as I say, the whole Roman Empire sort of here in sort of dividing this section here uh, and all the way up here so having them on side will give me a buffer against anyone that comes down from the north um, and from the uh, east um, so yeah that's pretty much it um, I know this has been a long episode um, but given that it's the first turn uh, there was a lot to do a lot to discuss and uh, a lot of messages and things to send uh, you can understand my reasoning uh, victory conditions, I forgot to go over those uh, last time. Uh, we need to hold 100 regions, including Jerusalem, uh, by or in 225 turns. Uh, I have a feeling that whoever's going to win is going to do it in less than uh, 225 turns. Um, it probably won't be me, uh, not to be pessimistic, um, but I'm not the best hot seat player. Uh, I'm sure there's uh, much better players out there. Um, and uh, being Sicily, there's only so much I can do before I start losing the uh, territory. But as I say, I'm I'm gonna stay strong. Um, I think I've got a, a uh, setup that will hopefully give us a lot of power in the region. Um, but for now, we're just uh, looking to uh, set up some diplom diplomacy. Uh, the Pope is not too fond of us. Uh, we're lower than the standard. Uh, nations so we'll need to impress him uh, with something um, and uh, although the Holy Roman Empire is the least uh, favoured by the Pope um, so we'll um, look to improve our relations uh, in some respect uh, with the Pope and uh, yeah just steady away um, there's no need to go to war too quickly um, as soon as I have these lands and possibly the one down here I think it's over here might be just there actually um, and uh, Deruso I can sort of sit back and build up my economy a little bit and um, maybe get rid of some troops or send them somewhere else because um, I'll need to set up a strong economy before I start pushing anywhere else um, so yeah that's pretty much it you won't be able to see much in terms of the um, the rankings I can't you know these dots just mean nothing to me it's just do all of them. Your know, tiny dots <laughs> mean nothing. So we'll wait until turn two or three before we start really looking into that. Uh, family tree wise, we've only got a king and our prince um, and a princess. Um, apparently, this guy, uh, Mr. Alfonso, is not a uh, not a family member. It's just a general. So. Um, yeah, he could be a uh, a bit of a problem loyalty-wise. Uh, we'll have to look into that. But uh, yeah, other than that, that's pretty much the end of the turn. So yeah, economy, we'll we'll fix that later. It'll it'll fix itself actually as soon as we take a, a few more settlements. Um, but for now, we are going to end the turn, and we're going to save the game. As Poland, turn one, save game. Okay, so yeah, that was uh, Sicily turn one. Um, 
we shall pass a turn on to Poland, which is the infamous uh, legend of Total War. Um, and we shall see what he, um, he has in store for his turn. Um, Legend of Total War was the player that set up the uh, set up the hot seat. In fact, he's the one that set up the entire uh, YouTubers hot seat group. Um, so uh, yeah, a, a great great uh, player and a really good uh, member of the Medieval Two Total War uh, community. Uh, setting up these hot seats is a lot of work, and I applaud him for doing it. Um, really great effort and um, a really super guy for. Uh, for putting all the effort into uh, to starting these up. So uh, thank you very much for uh, letting me participate in this grand campaign. And uh, the floor is yours, Mr. Legend of Total War. So um, I hope you enjoyed this episode and I shall see you all in turn number two.